children, I'm here once again to take you through mathematics for basic two. For basic two, I introduce myself as Miss Irene Guama the other time. And this is the second lesson in mathematics. Today we are on numbers and we are still going to talk about counting representing and looking at cardinality of numbers so by the end of the lesson you should be able to read and write two digit numbers using the expanded form also you should be able to identify positions of numbers around a given number on a number chart and finally you also use cardinal numbers to show the position of places of objects you use cardinal numbers to show the position of objects good let's look at our keywords for today our first keyword is going to be ordinal number ordinal number what does it mean it simply means a number showing a place a place of anything very good the next keyword is position 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 is also an act of placing or ordering or arranging so if you arrange something at a particular place that is the position of the thing good in our previous lesson we talked about how to represent numbers in tens and in loose straws hope you remember we also looked at how to write numbers in their number names. We looked at how to write the number names specifically for numbers in tens. How would you represent the number 12? Using bundles and loose straws. Let's do a quick recap of what we learned the other time. Yes, you are going to have a bundle representing the tenth side and then you have two loose straws representing two so if i have these with me it means i have the number 12. good and we said representing numbers in tens 10 i'm going to have one bundle 20 i'm going to have what two bundles 30, of course, 3. So you say 1 ten, 2 tens, 3 tens, and continuously. How would you write the number name for 20? 20. T W E N T Y. 20. And it went on and on and on to. 100. Very good. Today, let's look at how we are going to expand these numbers. Of course, we are looking at just two digit numbers. Two digit numbers. That means from 10 to 99. From 10 to 99, you are going to have two digit numbers. That means the number is not going to stand alone like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They are not going to stand alone. So we know that numbers standing alone are known as one digit numbers. And we represent them using loose strokes or strokes. But the moment they get to 10, we have the bundles. So 10, 11, you are going to see bundle with loose straws, bundles with loose straws. So today we are going to learn how to expand these two digit numbers in their tens and once okay children we are going to expand two digit numbers on our table on the board 
So I have my table on the board. I have four columns. One, two, three, four. So the first column is for the two digits, that's the numbers. Good. The second column is for the expanded form. So you look at how I'm going to work, split the two digits numbers into the expanded form. Then when I expand it, you know which one falls under tens, and the one that will fall under ones. Okay, give me any two digit number that you need. Okay, let's take 44. 44, the number 44 is two, has two numbers. You don't see four standing on its own. There's four and there's another four. So it is a two digit number. How do we expand this? So, in expanding, the number in front or the first number takes the tens. I'm taking it again. The first number takes the tens. That is the bundles. And then the second number takes the ones. So in expanding, I'm going to write four. For what? For the tens and another four for the ones. So if I need to represent this using bundles and loose straws, how many bundles will I have for the first number? Four, very good. And then the second number, I will still have four, but that one will be what? Loose straws. So now let's split them. Let's split these numbers. Of course, it has become one number because it is together. So let's split this number into its tens and ones form. So I'm going to have four here for the tens, four for the ones. Don't confuse yourself. The first four is for the tens, that's the bundles. Then the second four is for the ones, the loose straws. Let's have another two digits number. Okay, 21. 21. So I'm going to have two and one. How would we expand this? So which number is going to take the tens? And which one is going to take the ones? So the two comes and one. So under the tens and ones, I'm going to write what here? Two. Because we said the first number is always the tens. And the second number is going to be the ones. So I'll have my one here. Very easy. Let's have another number. Fifteen. How do you write fifteen? The digit fifteen, the numeral fifteen. One and five. Don't say 51. 1 and 5 is 15. 1, 5. So looking at this number, it's a two digit number. How will we expand it? Don't tell me the 5 is a 10 because that's the big one. No, 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 no. The first number always takes the 10s form. Okay. So I have my 1 here and 5. Splitting them into tens and ones, I have one as my tens, and then what five for my ones. So if I need to represent this using the loose straws and the bundles, which one will take the bundle? The one. So I have one bundle. How many loose straws? Five loose straws. Okay, let's try two more. Any number at all? Any given number again? Thirty-four. And 50. Okay, try and expand this. Of course, we're going to have three and four. Putting them into their tens and ones, we're going to have three tens, four ones. The last one, the first number always takes the tens. So five. 
and serve. Five is your tens, then zero. That means you don't have any loose straw. So it is fifty. Good. We are done with our expanding of two digit numbers. Let's move on to our second objective. Okay, children. We are going to use, we are going to identify positions of numbers around our two digit numbers that we just used. So, I have my number chart on the board. My number chart is from one up to 72. So we are going to locate uh, two digit numbers, one after the other. Then tell the numbers that are around, the position of numbers that are around each of these two digit numbers. So let's take 44. If you are going to locate the position of numbers, you should be given a direction. Directions such as move above, move to the left, the right, down. So if I need to ask for the numbers, that the position of numbers around 44, you see that I ask you look out for numbers that are above the number 44. So the above is giving you the direction to the various numbers. Hope you are following. Let's continue. Okay, so the number 44. Where is number 44 on this chart? It's here. Okay. Now, the number 44. Let's look out for the numbers that are above 44. Above 44. So what are the numbers that are above 44? Look closely. Above, directly above 44. This way. Did you see the numbers? This is 44. So what are the numbers? 36, 28, 20, 12, and 4. So these are the numbers that are above 44. Okay. What if I ask you to tell me the numbers that are on the left? The numbers that comes on the left side of 44. So when you are facing the board, your left is going to be this side. So you go towards this direction. What are the numbers? 41. 42, 43. These are the numbers that are on the left side of the number 44. What about right? Of course, you are going to tell me 45, 46, 47, 48. What are we doing? We are trying to identify the position of numbers around a given number. So the given number is 44. So to be able to tell the position of a given number, the numbers that are around a given number, you look out for directions. And I said the directions can be moved to the top, that is above, the left, the right, or downward, downward. So looking at 44, the numbers that are below 44 will be 52, 60, and 68. Hope you are enjoying yourself. Okay, let's do the second one. 21. Where can we see 21 on our number chart? 21, 21. Okay, where is it? 21. Now let's look out for the numbers that are on the right hand side of 21. Right, right. Where is your right? The hand you used to eat, right. So this side, what are the numbers? 
22, 23, 24. Okay, what about above? Above, we have only two numbers, 13 and 5. Below or downwards, 29, 37, 45, 53, 61, and 69. Try and do the rest by yourselves. Okay, let's move on to another thing that we are going to talk about, which are ordinal numbers. Remember we said in our keyword that we said ordinal numbers just shows position, places of items or objects. So if you need to tell the position of objects, you need to use certain words. For example, if the position of that person is one, taking the, the number one, the numeral one, how would you say it in an ordinal way? Try and brainstorm this. You're going to say first. First. Yes. Let's say you took part in a what? A race. And then you came, you were numbered the number one. You are not going to say, I am number one, I am number one, I am number one. No, you are going to use the ordinal number. I was first. I was first. So, if the next person who came after you is giving the number two, the other person will be giving the ordinal number second. So you have first, second. The number three will be what? Third. Number four, fourth. Number five, fifth. Number six, sixth. Number seven, seventh. Number eight, eighth. Number nine, ninth. Number ten, tenth. I hope you are listening to the way I'm pronouncing the words. First is first. Two is second. Three, third. Four, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Okay, now let's look at how we are going to write this in its number name. Then afterwards, we'll look at how to give ordinals from numbers in tens. That means 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80, 90, then 100. Hope you are ready for me. Okay, children. We are going to write the ordinals for the numbers. You need to know the spellings and then the short form for writing each number. Let's go. Number one. The ordinal for number one is what? First. F I R S T. So this is the number name for the ordinal. F I R S T. How do you write the short form? I'm going to write it here. Just watch. I'm going to write the number one and bring the first two letters for the word S T. So anytime you see something like this, one and S T, it means what? First, that is the number name for ordinal. First. Okay, two is what? Second. The short form. Take your two. Then add the last two letters. N, D. That is second. This is the short form. Okay, three, third, T H I R D. Third, the short form. Try and do it, let me see. You write three. Then, the last two letters. What are the last two letters? R and D. Good, this is third. Fourth. F O U R T H. The short form. T 
Take your four. Add the last two letters. PH. Hope you are following. Let's continue. Five. Fifth. Short form. Five. And TH. Of course, these are the two last letters. C. Short form. Six. TH. The rest are easy. Let's go. Seven. Short form. A. Short form. From the last two letters. Okay, the last one. Ten. The ordinal. Ten. We are done. So these are the ordinals for the position. Now let's look out for the ordinals for numbers in tens. The spellings are a bit confusing. So pay attention and look at the spellings very well. We already know 10. So 20. How will you spell 20? Just spell 20. Take out the Y at IE, then your TH. So I'm going to write 20. Take out the Y, bring IE, then your TH. 30. How will you write that? You write your 30, you take out the Y. Bring I E T H. Forty continues like that. Remember, I said forty. We don't bring the U. So I write F R T. My Y wouldn't come. I E T H. Fifty. Isn't that easy? Hope you are following. Let's go. We'll soon finish. 60. 60th. Okay. Now copy the table and complete it for me to 100. Remember, 100, you also take the word 100, then you add your pH. Very good. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. It's a bit, a bit lengthy, isn't it? But don't worry, I'm going to break them down for you when you come for the Zoom meeting. I'll see you there. Until then, bye-bye.